Hello and welcome to the 27 Minutes of Heaven we call the D1 Baseball Podcast. I am your host, Michael Patrick Rooney, and today's podcast brought to us by our friends at S2 Cognition. S2 Cognition delivers a revolutionary approach to helping athletes understand how in-game decisions impact their performance from youth to pro. Thanks again to the folks at S2 Cognition. Definitely check them out. So today I am joined by, you know, the pillars of this podcast, Aaron Fitt, Kendall Rogers. Gentlemen, how are you guys? Living the dream, coach. <laughs> well Doing said. Excellent. Yes, KR. Good to see you, uh, gentlemen. So we've got we've got we're a little heavy on the Sun Devils today on the podcast. <laughs> so we've got the skipper of the Sun Devils, Willie Bloomquist, but we've also got what I would consider the Roy Hobbs of the director of baseball wow. operations position, Graham Rossini, who wow. like kicked this off during the Pat Mur Murphy era. And then Graham's like in pro ball for 13 years, going to be a president of an MLB team. But now he's back. We sucked him back into college baseball. Um, so in all seriousness, it's awesome to have you guys here. So Graham, before we, we, we start to, to get after Willie, um, you know, obviously you came back to ASU. We're all of us college baseball people that know you were thrilled, but you got to partake in bringing Willie back. And so, yeah, for, I would love for you to just say hello and, and let's let's talk about how we ended up with the Pac the 1999 Pac-10 Player of the Year as the Sun Devil skipper. Yeah, Ruins, uh, Kendall, Aaron, great to see you guys. Thanks for having us and always always happy to talk, talk about the Sun Devils. And you're right, we've got three or five of us with connections to the program. So that's always a good way to start any kind of podcast in, in our opinion. But um, yeah, like, like you mentioned, I, you know, I had 13 years with the Diamondbacks. I was one of our executives um, in, in a previous life, had eight years with our baseball program, um, far less ceremonious than Coach Bloomquist did, but loved every minute of my time in the program. And that was always the, the connection for both Willie and I. You know, I missed him by a year in school. So kind of going through my experience was very familiar with who Willie was, what he meant to this university and his baseball program. And, you know, through our friendship and connection to the program, you know, that that just continued to develop over the years. And so fast forward to 2011, we signed Willie as a free agent. And now we're having a daily conversation around the Sun Devils. You know, it wasn't so much about the current climate in and around Major League Baseball. It was more about our alma mater and, you know, kind of staying as close to it as we could with with other things kind of taking up our time and energy. But, you know, fast forward to uh, the COVID season um, after and actually after Willie retired, remained very involved with the organization as a special assistant. And so was around the office every day and we would continue the conversation around all things ASU. Uh, but fast forward to COVID and, and for a number of different reasons, had an opportunity to, to look at a, a shift in a collegiate athletics. Um, Coach Corbin was, a, was an awesome resource and friend through that process, tried to steer me to Vanderbilt, but Ray Anderson had some other ideas and I was lucky to end up back at my alma mater um, and, and getting established again within intercollegiate athletics. And so, you know, one thing that Ray asked me to do, he said, hey, let's let's get some eyes on baseball. I know you've got a deep history in the program. I know you're very familiar with kind of the, the, the history and traditions and expectations around Sun Devil baseball. And so really spent the, the first several months here looking at current state and, and understanding where we were and, and really starting to kind of chart a course on where we wanted to be as a program. And when Ray made the decision to make a change uh, at the end of that season, you know, Willie was was a no brainer for us to quickly engage and, and talk through. And so um, I remember where I was when he when Willie and I first connected and say, hey, I, I think Ray's got interest in having a conversation with you. And it, it just kind of quickly fell into place from there. And what, what Ray had indicated at the hire was giving the program back to uh, the stakeholders. And that meant the fan base, obviously, the university community, but really the former players and coaches who have been a part of building this uh, this national program of ASU and, and understand that we had lost some of our shine. So. Um, quite a journey to get back to where we sit today. Uh, we're a year plus into this collectively. Uh, we've got some things rolling in the right direction, but I think that's been the, the key takeaway for me is plugging back into a school that we love. We both dearly love ASU uh, as a university, but, but this baseball program I know has shaped my life in a very profound way. I, I think I feel comfortable speaking for Willie that it has for him as well. And so to be able to play a small role in kind of getting it back to national prominence uh, has been a blast for sure. Hey, Graham, I, I have a question for Willie and for you that I, I think ties into what you just said, because, you know, obviously, Graham, you could have stayed in professional baseball and you probably would have been a president of MLB team the, the way your career was tracking. And for you, Willie, you know, like Graham said, you, you, you know, 14 year big leaguer, you could actually call the ball like you could do whatever you want, um, you know, that, that which is awesome. So 
the the question I have for you guys is the and you know my bias has to be accounted for, but the ASU program is so fascinating. Just googling it before we jumped on here, like most home runs in major league history by any oh. school is Arizona State. Most all star appearances by any college in MLB history is Arizona State. I think it might be the most big leaguers too. But the other thing that's so fascinating is the program. You know, even though there's a transition happening now. The program has stood the test of time in that, you know, you've got the five national titles from the 60s and 70s um, and, and the early 80s. Um, you know, Willie, your sophomore year, you mentioned it, 1998, you play for a national title against USC. Hey, the 2010 team is the number one overall seed in the national tournament. The 2020 team, you know, all of us felt like could have won a national championship. I mean, you think about that reign of the very, very, very top of our sport is remarkable. Now, all that said, Willie and Graham, here's my question. Man, have things changed, you know, in college athletics, in college baseball. And, you know, we'd all be naive to not represent the SEC. You know, today's SEC, Willie, is like the six pack that you played in. Like it's this monster that's out there. So the question is, what got you guys excited about who ASU baseball can be in this new world compared to, you know, this, the incredible brand that this program is. You want me to go Graham? <laughs> well, let me, I'll just, I'll offer a quick thought and then I'll, I'll step aside because I know people want to hear from Willie more than they want to hear from me. But I think the draw for me was the culture of our program when we were both a part of it was elite. And it was about, you know, the, the, the palm down mentality that everybody's contributing towards the team outcome. And that was, that was the driving force every single day it was Omaha or bust. We understood the expectation. We embraced that. And then you fast forward to, to the present state of college sports, where it is a fundamentally different environment around transfer portal, name, image, and likeness, uh, the national distribution of some of these other conferences. To me, that doesn't mean that we still can't be every bit as relevant and every bit as successful by focusing on the culture that made this program elite and finding a group of 40 or so people, coaches, student athletes, support staff, et cetera, that are fixated on that outcome and being relevant in all the ways that matter in today's uh, collegiate athletics. That's that's a no brainer. We have to be relevant in, the, in those spaces that I mentioned, but have our culture be elite and separating in terms of um, what it stands for to represent this program, what it means to be an extension of what's happened before any of us were a part of it. And um, that's a driving force. And not to say that other programs aren't equally as focused on culture, but I think that's going to be the separator for ASU as we continue to build this program back up is having a group of people committed to something special and bigger than any one individual. And, you know, it's, it's not where you're going, it's who you're bringing, as we like to say. And I think that's, uh, that's going to be a fun part of this journey is having a group of people locked in a room and focused on tremendous outcomes and then working relentlessly every single day to go accomplish that. Well said. You go oh, for it, Willie. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll piggyback on it. Obviously for me, it's, um, you know, the landscape is certainly different. Uh, you know, when you fast forward 25 years, I can't believe it's been that long since I played here, but you know, it, it is certainly different. Um, and I think it would be naive to, to say that if I were jumping into this thinking that we're going to be the same as it was 25 years ago, I'd, I'd be fooled. So, um, for me, that's, uh, you know, certainly understanding the landscape and understanding that we aren't in the eighties anymore, that we have to move forward. We have to continue driving forward. Um, you know, and there are there are some gorillas in the room that we're up against, uh, certainly. But um, as I said, this this program is special, regardless of any any generation and any time of year. This program is special. Um, it is our job to to continue to carry the torch from those guys that built this place that that put Arizona State on the map. Um, we still are producing tremendous players individually. Spencer Torkelson of, of recent. Hunter Bishop, uh, Alika Williams, guys that, um, you know, if, if those that want to say our program has, has been down uh, wins and loss record, yeah, maybe a little bit. And in postseason uh, success has been down, but we're still producing tremendous talents here. So our program isn't dead. Uh, you know, we are on we are on a tr uh, the, the right trajectory still in a lot of areas. We're still number one in major leaguers. We're still number one in getting players drafted. Um, that being said, our success is determined on how we are as a team and what we do as a team. Um, so just kind of getting back to those roots of what makes a, what makes a Sun Devil program a Sun Devil program. Um, I think it, it's, it's beyond the individual. It's more than that. Graham touched on it. It's more about uh, the culture, the accountability that we do, uh, that we try to do, 
um, and bringing in the right type of kid. It doesn't always have to be the first rounder, but it has to be the right, the right type of kid that's going to fit our mold and fit our personality, fit our brand and our style of play. Um, and I think if we can continue to, you know, go after and recruit those type of kids that, that ultimately we're going to, we're going to remain, um, and get this, hopefully get this program back to where we believe it should be. Um, and that is competing in Omaha and getting back to getting back to, to the middle of the middle of our country and, and playing in late June. So, but that being said, it, we know it's not gonna, it's not gonna snap our fingers and happen overnight. We got to build this thing right. Um, and it's a grind. Um, so for me, getting back into this, learning myself as to what it takes, um, learning the landscape of this industry um, has been certainly a challenge, but, um, you know, I think it's one that, that you see how gratifying it can be if you do it the right way um, and continue to produce, um, you know, in my mind, guys that are going to be a positive influence on society once they leave our program, whether that's in baseball or the business world or whatever it might be. Uh, you just focus on creating and continuing to build the right type of culture with the right type of people and the winds will follow. So um, I'm excited about the challenge. I love this place. I wouldn't be I wouldn't have jumped back into to the, the coaching role or even baseball for that matter if it wasn't at this school. So uh, for me, this is the only job that calls my name and, and I'm passionate about it. And um, we will work tirelessly until we hopefully get this thing back to where it should be. Hey, KR and, and Fitzy, before uh, you guys follow up, let me get Graham out of here. The Sun Devils are looking for a football coach. Graham, if you need me on the committee, I was second team all in Iraq my senior year in high school football. So second team all league, if you need me, you know, I got an eye for this stuff. Hey, uh, hey pr up, prime bro. time to the desert. Let's go. Prime time. There you go. <laughs> oh, no, comment, no comment on the topic. <laughs> Thank you guys for what you do for yeah. college baseball. And, and thanks for carving out some time for the Sun Devils. Right. Only thing I want to add in closing uh, from my standpoint Real and you'll appreciate this. There's been 916 guys who have played for Sun Devil Baseball across 60 plus years. That is a very small club when you think about what this program's accomplished with only 916 yeah. people. And so we take that responsibility seriously daily. It is really important that that we can make all 916 equally as proud and then help this current group understand the legacy that they can represent, but also that they're uh, they're instrumental in kind of moving that needle forward. So. To Sun Devil Nation watching and listening, you know, we're, we hear you. We're proud to be back. We can't wait to see what this program's capable of. And just thank the work that you guys are doing to promote college baseball and, and make this continue to grow as a nationwide sport and, and so much interest behind it. So fun time for college baseball. We're happy to be a part of it. Love it. Thanks, Graham. Good Thanks, to Graham. see you, G. See you, guys. Willie, see you at practice. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Graham's got a hose uh, now, Willie, if you need some more chucking. There you go. It's a big, big <laughs> right hander right there. The guy. Good angle, yeah. downward angle. <laughs> there you go. Sprayer, though. He sprays the fastball yeah. badly, though. It's not the, – the command is, is – All right. On the more important things, guys. On the more important things. <laughs> yeah. See you, Graham. Have a good one, man. See you. Hey, I, Willie, I think the biggest thing from my standpoint is, like, I always – you know, especially guys that come from the professional works. I remember talking to Tulo about this when he, you know, took the hitting coach job at Texas – is, you know, you go from a job as a special assistant in, in pro ball, obviously much different than being a college coach. I guess, number one, like, when they called you about the job, were you kind of like, you know, were you kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to get back into college baseball. But, no, like, number two, I'm always interested to hear about this from coaches. Like, when you, you know, when you got the head coaching job there and you looked at the landscape of college baseball, you know, you had to re-recruit the, the Ethan Longs of the world and guys like that to keep them from going somewhere else. Like, what is maybe something that you learned uh, about running a college program that you otherwise were kind of like, oh, okay, well, I actually didn't really know that. Or, like, what was one aspect of, of taking over a college program where you're like, hey, I actually know a little bit more about this than I previously thought I did? Well, I think, um, you know, to start off uh, – you know, to gain back into to the college game, that, that all happened very, very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and obviously I've been tied into to the ASU program and, and pull for it, uh, you know, was a big supporter of Tracy, uh, wanted him to do very well when he was here. And, you know, to see obviously the, um, I just want to help, right? So when, when that opportunity came up and, and they, they made the change with Tracy and I, I got a phone call like, hey, this is real. Do you want to do this? Um, you know, certainly my first instinct was, hell yeah, I want to do it. I want to, I want to help Arizona state. I love this place. Um, you know, and then the reality sets in of, okay, this is going to be a time commitment like no other, this is going to be a giant, but then going into it, understanding that 
I really don't know what I'm doing, you know, and this is a whole new landscape for me. I know the pro landscape like the back of my hand, but jumping back into the college um, and trying to understand the recruiting world and trying to understand uh, the NCAA rules and all the ins and outs that you can and can't do um, for anyone that has never done that and is just taking it upon uh, cold Turkey at a, at a university like Arizona state, it's uh, be careful what you wish for uh, because you're getting into something that is, that is, you know, tireless hours. And, you know, my wife is like, you ever going to be home for dinner again? I'm like, I, I don't know, not anytime soon. Um, you know, I have a lot to do and a lot to learn. So um, I'm not uh, naive to think that I was going to jump right in. This thing was going to be like clockwork, um, you know, for the things that I have to learn, I guess, um, any number of things. But to answer your question on, you know, what was going to be, I don't want to say the easy part, but the yeah. the the teaching of the game, that's that remains consistent for me. Um, the, the game of baseball, the fundamentals of baseball remain consistent, even though there's all these new uh, launch angle terms and all this stuff. Really, it's a result of putting good swings on the baseball and being consistent and, and simplifying things and being very good at doing the, the, the fundamental things correctly. Um, so that part of it, I think, was was able to jump into um, and take on. But but, um, you know, with every with every positive thing, there's always a hiccup, too. So trying to relate terminology to, to these guys and you know, have them look at me like I have two heads when I when I say terms like hands above the baseball. Um, I, I thought that was kind of standard <laughs> across the industry. But you know, like, what does that mean? Swinging underwater. I don't know what that means. And it's like, OK, we have to go backwards a little bit uh, before we can go forward. So um, I guess uh, it, all of this to say it has been a challenge. Um, it will continue to be a challenge, uh, obviously, as I learn, continue to learn the landscape. But it's one that I wouldn't do. Um, if I wasn't as passionate about Arizona State as I am, um, love this place and would clearly I, I would give my time of leisure and whatever else I have uh, time with my kids and family um, to, to try to build this program and, and get it back to, um, you know, where we all want it to be. Yeah, just as a quick follow up, I know everybody kind of has, or you know, kind of those singular identity, but you know, people would assume like, hey, when you think of coaches that you've learned from, you kind of lean on a little bit. People naturally think Pat Murphy, but are there any, you know, managers in pro ball that you that you kind of study from afar, or you know, college coaches that you just kind of look at as as somewhat of a model? Not not to say you don't have your own identity, but like, are there guys that you've kind of studied from the past that you're kind of like, okay, that, that's kind of how I want to run my program. Well, I, I was very fortunate and blessed. Uh, I played for 11 different major league managers and, and some very big name ones in different eras. You know, the Lou Pinella era from early on to, to Bob Melvin, Mike Hargrove, who I spoke to today, um, Trey Hillman, um, you know, Kurt Gibson. I got a chance to play Dusty Baker for some very tremendously unbelievable managers. Um, so I got a chance to see what successful managers do and what type of environment now obviously it's a little bit different in the big league locker room than it is a college locker room but you take things from those guys that worked um and try to emulate that um whether it's just sayings or or um you know the accountability factor that those guys preached upon um and then of course you know i have my my staple mentors like murph um you know one of my other mentors is actually on staff with me and mike goff a uh, guy that I learned a tremendous amount from in the pro game. Um, but, um, you know, you take things from those guys, I think, and you try to incorporate your own, um, navigate your own waters with the, with their teachings, I guess, if you will. Um, but but for me, the things that stick out were really the, the simple things that those guys said that you remember. Um, you know, Lou Pinella being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, if you really think about what that means, it's like, man, that, that fits in perfect with the college environment because you're really never going to be comfortable out here. So get get comfortable out of your own skin and be able to get outside your comfort zone and still perform. Uh, Mike Cargo, shorten the times where you struggle and lengthen the times that you're good. That's what that's what superstars do is figure out ways to get out of your funk earlier so it doesn't roll into three, four weekends in a row. You get able to get out of it. And usually it means going back to the fundamentals. So, um, But those type of things really are – are a lot of locker room and on-field stuff. Um, I guess the challenging part for me personally is, again, learning all the off-field stuff. Um, and that is something those pro guys can't help me with because it's uh, 
you know, it's a certainly a different game in the college world. So that's, I rely a lot on Murph on, on those type of things. And, um, you know, old college coaches, Pat Casey has been a, been a big help for me as well. Um, you know, just on little intricacies of, of things to do and don't do. Did you find that your experience, you know, uh, after you, you finished playing your experience working with the Diamondbacks, it seemed like you kind of, you got your hands into a lot of different things in that role as a special assistant uh, to the president, if I'm not mistaken. Um, th- does a lot of those skills kind of transfer over now to the, the off the field stuff, the, the administrative stuff, all those kinds of things? I think at the time I didn't realize that that would ultimately help me for this. Cause I, I really had no intention of, you know, th- this, this job is, <laughs> was pretty surprising. It came on very, very quickly, but, Doing what I was doing with for the Diamondbacks and working the back the back office type stuff certainly 100% helped. Um, it didn't prepare me fully, but at least I have a, a basic knowledge of you know how do ticket sales work? How does that whole thing work? How does uh, finding a way to say yes? How does that really encompass a, a program and and um, you know uh, fan experience at a stadium? Um, finding trying trying to find ways to to reach out to our donors and keep that relationship going. Um, those are all the things that really take up a lot of time, but are certainly necessary for, you know, for a program to function properly. And those are quite frankly, areas that we need to get a ton better in. Um, and, and that, you know, in the last year I had so much else to learn that, you know, it's hard to cut yourself into that many pieces, but, um, now that I'm getting a better idea of how this all works, those are things that we got to step it up big time in, um, you know, and getting alumni back on board and all that type of stuff that, uh, you know, that, that relates to what I was doing over there with the D-backs. And, and it feels like, it feels like, you know, with, with what you guys have done there with moving into to Phoenix Muni and, and really bring that place up to speed. I mean, it's, it feels like a first class facility. And, you know, if you go there in the right day, boy, the, the game day atmosphere is still awesome. I mean, especially in the West Coast, it really stands out. I mean, how close do you think you are um, to, to tapping into that, that passion that is, that is there that exists for Arizona State baseball? I mean, did you see, did you see signs of it coming back last year, even though the team, you know, kind of struggled? A hundred percent. And to me, obviously the, the, the wins lost last year, you know, we, we knew it was going to be a challenge um, going into it, but I think the fan support, we set a rec, uh, an attendance record at Muni uh, since we've been over here for, for eight years, you know, we, we finished number one, I think we finished number two or three all time Arizona state attendance. So even with that, I think the excitement is definitely here and around here. Um, you know, we brought the alumni game back last year, we had over a hundred alums uh, returned for that. And I think that was a complete utter shock for the current players that were here, where they're like, wow, I can't believe this many people follow. And I'm like, now you're understanding that this program means something. Um, it means you're carrying the torch for all these guys that built it before you. This isn't about you. It's about the program. Um, and for them to understand that and realize that they're like, oh, wow, this is, this is pretty special. It's like, damn right. This program is special. And you need to understand that. Um, that's part of the the responsibility of, of wearing a devil uniform. You got to understand who came here before you and, and what this program means. So, um, you know, from that standpoint, it's been um, it's been fun to to kind of reinvigorate and, and understand that there is a fan base here that is very passionate about Arizona State baseball. Um, and you know, we have visions of of a, we have a wonderful place to play at Muni, but we still have visions of making this place better um, and and giving this place a little bit of a makeover still um it's beautiful now but we can make this place better and i think that starts with um you know having fan support first and foremost um getting people out to the games understanding that the product that we're putting on the field is going to be very competitive um it's meaningful baseball we're playing 56 playoff games every year that all matter um and hopefully we can put a brand out there that is representative of our of our uh of our tradition and our history of our program so a um, lot of things to be excited about. And we're, we're certainly hopefully trending in the right direction. Love it. Hey, Willie, I got one more for you before. Let me, uh, I, I want to announce a partnership that we've got with D1 Baseball now that we're super excited about. That's with the ABCA, American Baseball Coaches Association. Um, just thrilled to be able to, to more formally partner with these guys. And just want to encourage any coaches that are listening, make sure you make your plans to get 
to Nashville for the convention this year. It's going to be January 5th through the 8th, 2023 at the Gaylord Opryland in Nashville. It's the biggest and best baseball weekend of the year. The guys at the ABCA are telling us it's going to be the, the highest attendance they've ever had in, in the 79 years of the event. We've already got our hotel rooms. Encourage everyone to do the same. The early bird special registration deadline is October 14th, so that'll be here before we know it. Uh, and for more information, you can sign up at abca.org. And uh, Willie, that is the goal that one of these days, the Friday morning or the opening talk, which I've said is the one that just I, I, it gets me so geeked up. But, you know, that coach speaking to the whole, um, you know, to everyone in the community about how you won a national title. Here's here's the final question, Willie, and I think we should wrap after this. So, you know, you take over last year, fan base is jacked up. The alumni base at Arizona State, which is so that's an important part of this program are really excited about you taking, taking over. Uh, but now it's like, okay, the roster wasn't ready to win. What, what, that's the next step. And, and you guys had an incredible <laughs> transfer class. You know, just dominated the transfer portal. And in some ways, I just if I'm going to be candid, in some ways I was surprised. It, and, and in other ways, you're like, okay, well, no, that does make sense. Like Arizona State should be a, a, a great destination for transfers. But I mean, I mean, big names too. Like, you know, the two kids from USF, Luke Keishol, Owen Stevenson, their Friday night guy. Think about Nick McLean coming in. Think about Timmy Manning, what a big recruit he was for Florida. Think about Owen Dunn coming from Florida State. So take us through that process of, I mean, you guys didn't just kind of get involved in the transfer portal. You really dominated it. Well, we knew, um, I guess that that's, uh, it, regardless of what you feel about the landscape of college baseball with the transfer portal, with all the NIL stuff, um, that was something that really it, it you have a chance to, to rebuild quickly um, if you do it right. Um, I think uh, A&M did that last year where they, they ended up, um, you know, in the College World Series with a pretty revamped roster. Um, I think if you. You know, for us, we knew that this was going to these first couple years until we kind of start getting our, our recruits in that we feel are, are freshmen and ultimately want to build this program with our freshmen, uh, one on top of each, of each other um, class by class. But in the meantime, we knew last year's team, um, you know, respectfully, was probably not going to win, uh, you know, long term. And we needed to make some changes at the end of the year. Um, and bring in guys that certainly I think that, that could help us. And I think we did a, you know, a very admirable job in that. Sam Peraza worked his absolute butt off uh, in, in the back channels. Our whole staff really did a, a phenomenal job on, on being dialed into every name that was coming into the portal and being first and trying to get on them right away um, with what we needed. And we knew we were going to need a lot of guys. Um, but it's one that I think that you can, if you're bringing the right guys, hopefully you can, you can immediately impact your program and, and, it's not necessarily a four or five year rebuild it. You can, you can turn it over pretty quick and be successful, you know, in a year or two. So obviously that was our goal. Uh, we knew we were going to have to get rid of a, a lot of great kids, but just frankly, couldn't, um, we didn't feel we could win with um, and bringing guys that can certainly help us right here and now, while at the same time, bringing on a freshman class and, and continue building with those guys as we, as we revamp that freshman class and then the 23 class that we'll, We'll build upon with those guys. So um, there was a thought process to it. Whether or not it pans out, we'll, we'll find out. Um, but uh, on paper, we did bring in some very good names. Um, Ross Dunn and Luke Kieschel or a couple other guys that that weren't mentioned there. But um, very exciting. Uh, you know, and Drake Varnado, uh, another kid that we brought in that has some tools. We, we brought some kids in that can certainly help us, um, you know, along with some junior college kids that, that might surprise you. So, um that part of it's very exciting and, and I'm anxious uh, to get rolling with these guys. That's awesome. Very cool. Willie, it was so great visiting with you again today. I can't wait to see you guys this fall. I'll be up in Vegas for the, you know, really cool scrimmage with Vandy. That'll be great too. Um, but yeah, just, th this is exciting. It, it's been, um, I'm sure it's been a whirlwind for you, but um, loved, loved getting to, to chop it up with you here. This was fun. Well, guys, I appreciate it. Appreciate all you guys do. And, and continuing to promote uh, the college, the college sport. I think it's, um, you know, I follow you guys obviously frequently on social media and, and, you know, you guys are the information givers. So I appreciate it. It helps brand our game, which I think, um, I don't know if you guys feel it, but I feel like there's a giant shift towards college baseball. Um, I think people are loving it. I think they're seeing the intensity and the excitement of the college game and why a lot of pro guys are coming 
back to college when they're done playing mm -hmm. because this matters, man. It's fun. It's an exciting environment, and uh, how you guys promote the game is awesome. So I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks, awesome. Willie. Thanks. You the man. Appreciate Speaking you. of promoting the game, people, um, Willie, with an outstanding segue, we have an incredible promotion right now on the website. <laughs> and by the way, guys, on the website, we have our top 100 programs, which is such a cool segment. Ten drop every single day. Really kind of a five to ten year look back on the, the top 100 base college baseball programs in America. So if you don't have a subscription to D1 Baseball, uh, here's a promotion. Just type in Summer 22. Again, Summer 22. Uh, summer 22. You'll get 20% off, and um, there you go. So uh, that's it. We will be back next week with another Coach Conversation. Thanks to Graham Rossini, Willie Bloomquist, uh, and we will catch everyone next week. Take care, everybody.